Greetings, members one and all of the Salvation Nation. Things are not looking good for silver. At least according to what I'm about to share with you in these particular articles here. But don't lose hope or don't lose heart when it comes to silver. But it's something we should be concerned about because most of us are thinking that silver has got a lot of upwards momentum or at least the potential thereof. But I think at the very least, this may help explain why the gold to silver ratio is so high. So we'll explore this and take a look and see what they're talking about in terms of silver. Yes, this comes to us from dailyeffects.com, and it's talking about gold and silver outlook. A dip, then rip. In other words, it's going to dip a little bit and then rip up high. And uh, talking about gold, Bryce continues its battle below long-term resistance. And this fight may continue for a little while longer before pushing on through to new bull cycles highs. Overall, though, this is a good thing as congestion phases can bring the power needed to sustain a run, especially when there's resistance as big as what gold is facing from the 2012 and 11 period. So the price is currently sitting up against an upper parallel running down off the September high. The parallels are becoming part of a uh, developed bull flag. And while this may be intermediate term bullish, the downward sloping nature of these formations is still near-term bearish. So in other words, you're getting into some technical analysis here of, of what uh, the author here is talking about. And with gold, we can see from these charts kind of what he's talking about here. And I'm not really a, a technical uh, analysis kind of guy. You know, in my view, you kind of get in the weeds with this stuff. And it can kind of, you know, you don't see the forest through the trees when you get into this level of analysis. To me, the bigger movers are those natural market forces. Although you can look at trends and you can predict things, the wedges and what they're talking about here and seeing where things are moving and draw lines every which way but loose. And there may be something to that um, in terms of, of pre predicting analysis. and, and uh, But you have to take into account the what conditions led to the prior movements in price and it can be very different than what could happen in the future but they're saying here that silver is running a bit weaker than gold not totally unexpected as the rallying to the september high was parabolic and in need of a correction there is a trend line resisting resistance running down off last month's high that could keep pressure on silver much in the same way as gold but it wouldn't take much to knock silver back to new corrective to a new corrective low in the author's view, the weaker posturing makes silver the better short for now. But like gold uh, price, should price hit above the October 1 low at 1689, it could give indication of increasing strength. The top side trend line will still need to be taken out, though, before longs can gain any real traction. So uh, uh, there we go, September T-line resistance for this, uh, for this chart here for silver. And... What could mean if there is a, a new corrective low down down the road, what does that mean? I don't think it means it's going to go way low or much lower than what we've seen here. In fact, here in 1689, you know, remember the video I posted about $1,500 gold and $17 silver. Well, 1689 is still pretty high. That was a very short amount of time. I don't even remember it hitting to that point, but it must have been there and only happened for a short amount of time before it went back up to $17 again. This article from Forbes goes into a little different uh, uh, measurement, talking about uh, falling oil discoveries and a rate uh, cut in question. We'll kind of talk about some of that stuff, because I think you have to take into account all different measures of the economy here when you look at gold and silver prices. Jay Powell uh, October rate cut appeared back on the table after disappearing economic news was released last week, according to Forbes here. But Friday's mostly positive employment report may have dashed those chances. The Institute for Supply Management reported last week that both the U.S. manufacturing and non-manufacturing sectors weakened in September. The non-manufacturing or services purchase managers index PMI fell to 52.6 down from August 56.4 representing the lowest reading since August of 2016. The Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index, though, contracted for the second uh, straight month in September. 
the gauge came in at 47.8, a 10-year low. So according to one company that makes electrical equipment, appliances, and components, the U.S. economy seems to be softening. The tariffs have caused much confusion in the industry. And by the way, it's not just that industry, but it's everywhere, you know, and including the precious metal markets, I think, have been affected by tariffs. In fact, I think that's a leading indicator of where things are with the tariffs. In fact, speaking of tariffs, there's some talk that they're going to tackle currency manipulation by China first. If they can come in to an agreement on, on currency, that may be one of the biggest uh, developments that could happen potentially before a full trade agreement. If they do come to that agreement, we shall see. So here we see manufacturing and services and some weakening as we move into, into July and September there. Other, other aspects of the economy are still strong, but you're going to get mixed reaction there which I think could uh, have uh, play an effect. And any positive developments with, with the trade will certainly offset that or it will start to come around again. Uh, we're, we're bracing for the worst leading up to Friday's official employment report. Well, the actual number of jobs added in September 136, 136,000 wasn't particularly inspiring. Markets seemed to be like, like the fact that unemployment rate fell to 3.5%. An incredible 50-year low. I will also know that here in the news that uh, new uh, uh, applications for unemployment were down uh, 10,000 from last week. Uh, so that's good news. And then conventional oil and gas discoveries are at a 70-year low, which could have, and obviously now with that information out, oil prices are up per barrel, $53 per barrel now. And so here we can see here, conventional oil gas discoveries have fallen to lowest level in 70 years. We can see here, here's the development and the um, U.S. Con conventional. You know, we're seeing uh, in the United States up and then around the world down because we're fracking and natural gas and the like, compressed natural gas. We're finding different ways, shale and fracking. Um, and so we're now, uh, now the... U.S. U.S. The United States is now the world's largest oil exporter, for sure, and that so the dichotomy has changed a bit, which means that the, the petrodollar is shifting a bit. The dollar is not as much dependent there on that. Of course, a uh, what happens with that? Now we've got this here: economic conditions about near record inflows into precious metals. Economic conditions still look strong in the U.S. and according to Larry Kudlow who is President Donald Trump's chief economic advisor. There could be some positive surprises this week when the U.S. and Chinese trade negotiators meet. Nevertheless, many investors are seeking safety from a potential pullback by piling in their treasuries as well as funds that invest in gold and precious metals. Such funds took in a total of $2.8 billion in the week ending September 25th, the second biggest weekly amount on record, according to the Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. Wow. And that's pretty amazing. It's not just gold that's seeing inflows. Holdings in global silver exchange traded products, ETPs or ETFs, hit a new record high in mid-August when precious metal uh, prices were headed higher. According to Metals Focus Data, investments in ETPs rose to 706.2 million ounces or $11.5 billion. Now, these holdings, the reason why that may not be good for silver is uh, let's say the price goes up, you know, um, with silver five ten dollars an ounce. They may decide to dump those, and if they dump them all at once, that could literally mean a crash in silver prices. And the, again, these is paper silver. This is electronic silver exchange traded funds ETFs, all time high. Look at this chart here. I think this is amazing to see. Here is as you look back from two thousand and eight to now. Uh, you know, the price is kind of close to where it is now, but look at the difference. You had them almost on parity with each other in terms of where they are. Of course, you know, that's a different thing in the axis here, $20 and 200 um, uh, you know, in millions of ounces here. But nonetheless, look at that. It's amazing to see the price skyrocketed up, but the, the exchange trade of funds accumulation just continued to slide upward. And it's really been somewhat of an upward trajectory ever since. But in the last few weeks uh, and uh, months here, of, of uh, we've seen a great influx, massive highs here of these exchange trader pro uh, products. Now, does this 
Is this proof of manipulation? Because you know, and I know too, I just don't know to what extent, how much of these exchange traded products out there, how, what do they match ounce for ounce? How many ounces are there compared to the actual physical ounces backing them up? You know, uh, I've seen some numbers from some different places, but I'd like to find an actual solid, uh, reliable source on that. Um, but nonetheless, regardless of that, let's say it's a, let's say that they do back them up. If they sell them, and there's a, this is a, a market where liquidity is absolutely just instantaneous, and these are speculators, I believe, to hold these. So they could sell them, and the and the price could go back down far below today's prices, and even more. That's what I worry about with this massive accumulation, especially this little hump right here. Uh, that does not bode well for silver in my view. What is the true test, I believe, in the silver price um, and the actual serious, the serious accumulators are silver are those who get the physical. That's right, the physical. What you're hearing there is the flip of a silver coin. It's a two-ounce silver coin. It is chunky. It is hefty. This thing here is physical. Holding the physical, when you have this, you're a serious stacker. That's right. The, the people who hold the exchange traded products, and by the way, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's the people who hold the physical that are the ones that um, are the really serious, um, uh, really, investors or, or the people who use it as a hedge. We're the stackers. We hedge. We're uh, holding them as a, as a wealth-preserving tool. The people who buy the exchange traded pro products now, as a part of the portfolio, they may. There's not you can't hold them for the same reason. But I I wonder, and I'm thinking that most of these people that are buying, it, especially with this little hump here, are buying the speculation, knowing that it's low, knowing that that ratio is 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 you know at 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 highs that we haven't seen for several years now, and uh, and there's room to move upwards, and they're going to take advantage of that. Uh, we'll see. So, well, that's what kind of where we're at on that, and that does not bode well for silver because that puts it in the in the matter of a of a of a speculative investment rather than a hedge, which is what it's purpose for. And I encourage those of you out there listening to this video, if you are in the exchange traded markets, there's nothing wrong with that, but hold some physical as well, uh, because you could get burned with those with the silver um, there, and, and also it could be an advantage. Now, obviously, those who hold the physical suffer when that happens too, because I guarantee if a lot of people sell all at once, uh, when the price goes way up, then it's gonna hurt people holding it in the physical as well. But when you hold the physical, you're holding it for the long run. It's not quite as easily as liquid as the exchange traded funds, although it is quite liquid, especially Silver Eagles. Um, constitutional silver, uh, other bullion out there. Post your thoughts below. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to y'all for watching. And remember, I'm posting videos every day, so if you don't get a notification or see a video in the in the um, in the live feed, more than likely I have done a video in your subscription feed, and it may not show up there. Just come to my channel, and you'll see it. I want to encourage you guys to please rate share, comment, and subscribe, and a multitude of gratitude to you all.